Hart. Uh, and a quick strike there and a nice takedown driving yeah, through Miguel Toth. Well, a blink and you miss it, said Gray Patino. Well, blink and you miss that takedown. Miguel Toth immediately in on the uh, the legs of Gray Patino and now in an arm triangle or side choke position. But uh, you look at Gray Patino is actively trying to defend from the ground. Excellent wall walk there as he's trying to get anything to get away from underneath of Miguel Toc. And Toc now dropping in with the guillotine. Not much pressure on it though. As soon as you it's get on the wrong side, side control. Of that point. Yeah. And now it's Gray Patino popping into the mount and Miguel Tox scrambling out. Nice transition into the guard. It's funny, we're talking about the, uh, the idea that uh, Gray doesn't actually cut down that much. It looks, uh, on that regards, uh, he does have the bigger chest. Hey, you, you the recovery time that you get from cutting weight is, is very much a part of your success as a fighter. And if you don't have to cut weight and you can still compete equally with guys who do cut weight, that's gonna put you at a big advantage because you don't have to recover. You didn't lose any of your muscle mass in, in the cutting of the weight. So a, a big advantage if you don't have to cut weight and you can still compete. But you see the size differential. As soon as Miguel Talk gets in on those legs, he's getting those takedowns quite easily. It's just that, it depends on what your game is. Um, one classic idea is uh, Frankie Edgar, who doesn't really cut much weight, but still a force to reckon with. Miguel Talk now on top of Gray Patino, trying to find an opening to end the fight. It just makes it that much more diff difficult that you can't punch someone in the face because if they're staring right at you, you might want to hit them in the ugly face. Well, especially for G Miguel Talk, who it fights down in, in Lethbridge for most of his fights. And in Lethbridge, you can strike to the head of a downed opponent. So it's got to be something new. That's why you see a lot of the submission attempts from Miguel Talk when normally he would be attacking the head if he was in a different rule set. But good for him for adapting to the rules and still having a good game plan to be able to continue to put pressure on Gray Patino. Evolve or die. Miguel Talk now still on top of Gray Patino, continuing to work. And uh, at this point, uh, doing a lot of uh, scoring, certainly on the judges' scorecards. Uh, came out with the big takedown early and has been in control for most of this first round with just 20 seconds to go. And now he's in the mount position, so look for him to either try to isolate an arm to attack it via a Kimura, or uh, maybe posture up and uh, land some shots to the chest just to put an exclamation point on this round. So just 10 seconds left, under 10 seconds now. Miguel Talk likely to end this round one on top of his opponent, Gray Patino. Round number two now underway. Miguel Talk in the all black trunks, the black and white trunks for Gray Patino out of the blue corner and uh, trying to drive through, looking for the single leg takedown here. Nice defense so far from Gray Patino. He's got a wizard on the far side, which really is helping keep him standing, but as soon as he gets off the cage, that's when the takedown happens. Yeah, ferocious is Miguel, and uh, he just has a tenacity that uh, Gray unfortunately can't handle right now. So again, continuing to just pressure from the top is Miguel Talk. Putting down his fantastic beard in the face of Gray. It's, it's, always, it's always better to have a beard when War you have beard. the option. War beard, all day, every day. Yes. It's so right up against us in the broadcast position, and for the first time, Elias Theodoro is going to have to deal with uh, knowing that anything he says, the fighters get to hear. So uh, just enjoy that moment. It's, it's like your first fight, except uh, way more awkward. Mm. Mm. Especially when I make that noise. Miguel Talk still on top, trying to pressure out of that was a great Patino, and eventually finds his way out of it. Miguel and with a takedown of his own. Takedown of his own, that's right. Try to put some authority on it, and that's something that Gray Patino needs to do. He hasn't had at any exclamation points in this fight yet, and that's what judges look for, is how many times do they remember, hey, I remember that move. That's gonna be a move that's gonna stick in their mind. Especially if he can stay on top for the majority of this round, that's gonna look really good to the judges, as long as he can continue to be effective. Miguel Talk. Underneath, Gray Patino on top. Talk spent most of round one on top. But now Gray Patino trying to reverse his own fortunes here and get a win in round two before potentially heading to a third and final round. 
I think the triangle attempt in the first round has got Gray Patino shy because he's not throwing these punches as big as he did in the first round when he was on top because of the danger of that triangle choke. Miguel Talk comes from an excellent gym that is known for being able to pull out submissions from the bottom. As you look here, there's an attempt at an arm bar and Miguel, or sorry, Gray Patino really has to stack up Miguel Talk or he's gonna be in big trouble. Talk now trying to roll it over, trying to find that angle to put pressure on the elbow. Seeing pain on the face now of Gray Patino, but no tap yet with 27 seconds to go. Tells the referee he is just fine. And now Miguel Talk having to give it up a little bit. It just shows the um, basically the, the lack of experience in regards to the amateurs in regards to jumping onto something or the tenacity of the other opponents for surviving. Well, his last 10 seconds here for Gray Patino, and unfortunately, unless he really pushes through on this round, it's going to be tough to call, even with the slam that Gray Patino had. So third and final round, tried the kick, caught it, and Gray Patino has a, is back on top to start round three where he ended round two. Well, you get a takedown, but you eat a nasty kick in the ribs by Miguel Talk. Now, if it's me I and, and I'm coaching Gray Patino, I gotta tell him you're down two rounds to nothing. Miguel Talk, obviously we're on round one, but you have to be saying, hey, you've gotta go for a finish in a dangerous position here. Again, one arm in uh, and not to, not in a good way. Uh, here is Gray Patino, but he uses his ability to slip out and get into side control. So a good position for him to work here, but he really needs to work to end the fight. Gray Patino continuing to work. Could possibly throw a knee or two to the midsection. But so far now, Miguel trying to block that, throws the uh, throws his uh, shin in the way of that hip to prevent any knees from coming in. Again, trying to now work to the guard and does so successfully. So a nice transition game on the bottom for Miguel Talk. Transition's good. Um, uh, Gray needs to... I guess really do uh, throw out a little bit more energy in it. If he is down two, um, you only have three minute rounds and uh, a lot of it's already taken up. Minute and a half remaining in this fight. Third and deciding round here between Miguel Talk and Gray Patino. Talk looking to get his record back to 500 at three and three. Patino looking to put together a two fight win streak early here in his amateur career. And Miguel trying to roll him over, but Patino doing a good job of keeping his base and holding him down. And he's trying to use that Kimura position, sitting up and attacking a single arm to be able to switch over and end up on top of Gray Patino. But Gray Patino is holding tough here and he's landing some nice shots to the side. Uh, I have no doubt that if Gray Patino continues like this, he's gonna win the round, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough to win the fight. I just. I'm not sure who won round two, and so if I'm Gray Patino, I'm standing up and perhaps trying to see if I can use that Muay Thai background to be able to knock my opponent out. Mama did say knock him out. Patino, Patino on top of Ta continuing to work. And I guess, uh, Elias, if, if Patino does win this fight, you, you won't call it a comeback. Oh, well played, sir. <laughs> Patino continuing to work on top. He's been on top for the majority of round three. Three minutes just about in the books, 15 seconds to go. Looks like he's not really working for a submission here. And uh, Miguel might have been able to hold on for that last 10 seconds anyway. So Patino obviously thinks he's won one of the rounds uh, coming into this one. He's clearly won the third round here. And uh, we'll see what the judges scorecards say in just a moment as Miguel Talk and Gray Patino go the distance here at Hard Knocks 39.